Toronto's light favorites, 98.1 CHFI, and relax with us online at chfi.com. of the city this is the soundtrack to where you feel the most alive the most romantic the most well the happiest and sometimes even the saddest good evening i'm don jackson in the liner notes to the justin hayward cd the view from the hill was this line the view from the hill is lonelier still without you this hour the experience of place with lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, Blue Rodeo in this town, recorded live on 98.1 CHFI, and Fergie and Big Girls Don't Cry. In the private time section of the April 1991 issue of Glamour Magazine, an important book. And what it had to say to each and every one of us was given some space. Listen to what this writer in the magazine had to say about it and its subject matter. And I quote, Every day we spend our time in places, homes and offices, streets and highways, buildings and backyards. But we largely ignore them. We're in the habit of putting blinders on our own experiencing, says Tony Hiss, author of The Experience of Place. But these sights and sounds and sensations are directly important to us in terms of our physical health and well-being and our ability to feel connected to other people and to the environment at large. Unquote, this hour experiencing this place in time with lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, Colby Calais, all bubbly, and Riandon with the face. The writers in the April 1991 issue of Glamour magazine go on to say, the effect that our surroundings have on us is profound. In one study, rats in an enriched environment, one with more room to run around and more things to do, learn tasks better than rats in ordinary cages. The brains of the enriched environment rats grew physically larger with more interconnections of neurons within days. More about this shortly with lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. My companion writing is called Experience of Place. Log on right now to the CHFI website. Follow the links on the homepage to visit my weblog at chfi.com. And lovers and other strangers returns. I'm Don Jackson. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is Lovers and Other Strangers on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's Light Favorites, 98.1 CHFI. And relax with us online at chfi.com. And welcome back to Lovers and Other Strangers, now a blog as well, at chfi.com. Don Jackson. More from this Glamour magazine piece based on the book The Experience of Place by Tony Hiss. And I quote, researchers have pinpointed aspects of landscape that all human beings 
seem to respond to positively. People show a preference for grass, whether they live in the city or the rainforest, or the Arctic Circle. This may go back to our earliest days as humans, says Hiss, in the grassland settings and savannas of East Africa. Unquote. Got me uh, thinking about another article that was also in Glamour magazine in August of 1994 in the private time column. Why we love a great view. And again, I quote, a, a beautiful view can have a powerful effect on our emotions. And scientists now say that this may be related to our survival instincts. People around the world tend to prefer views of water, mountains, trees, and wide open spaces, all of which were important to our ancestors' survival, says University of Washington zoologist Gordon Orion's PhD. Some findings. Most city parks display a mix of field and wood that resembles the African savanna, where humans are believed to have evolved. We like views of flowers, blossoms, and grazing animals because they're associated with food. People prefer to look at wide, branching trees, the kind that our ancestors climbed for safety. Orion's claims that our view preferences are also influenced by where we're raised. I love landscapes that include dogs and docks says a woman born in Wisconsin and an Iowa woman now living in New York City has plastered her office with pictures of the cornfields back home. The time this writing, the University of Washington zoologist said, we're attracted to view, views that are similar to where we grew up because they engender a feeling of safety and familiarity. Nice views inspire good feelings. People who have a great view or who grew up with one tend to be calmer and more at peace with themselves. His advice? If you don't have a view, then go to one. Travel to the country on weekends. Spend your lunch hour at the park. Even small bites of nature can have restorative benefits. Unquote lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers sting in fields of gold and Otis Redding on the dock of the bay. Christopher Williams from Origins of Form published by Architectural Book Publishing Company, wrote, A leading architect once built a cluster of office buildings set in a central green. The landscape crew asked him where he wanted the sidewalks between the buildings. His reply? Just plant grass between the buildings. By late summer, the new lawn was laced with pathways of trodden grass. The paths followed the most efficient line between the points of connection, turned in easy curves rather than at right angles, and were sized according to the traffic flow. In the fall, the architect simply paved the pathways. Not only did the paths have a design beauty, but they responded directly to user needs. Unquote. Christopher Williams from Origins of Form, published by Architectural Book Publishing Company. We also seem to respond innately to curving paths that wind off into the distance, offering a sense of mystery. Again, back to this glamour piece, and we all respond to places where we can feel safe, enclosures, and places of refuge, as well as long sweeping vistas where we can see for miles 
says his. The hunger for trees and for water seems universal too. Unquote lovers and other strangers. From 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers. Rod Stewart with this. The writers in the April 1991 issue of Glamour magazine conclude by saying, and again I quote, by experiencing our environments instead of tuning them out, we can appreciate and preserve those qualities that nourish us and guard against the encroachment of those that isolate and deprive us. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Stay tuned. Lovers and other strangers returns. I'm Don Jackson. Passion set to words and music. Lovers and other strangers on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's light favorites, 98.1 CHFI, and relax with us online at chfi.com. We're in the heart of Toronto, around the world on the internet, and now a blog as well at chfi.com. My companion writing tonight is called Experience of Place. Log on right now to the CHFI website. Follow the links on the homepage, the starting point. For lovers and other strangers around the world at chfi.com. Good evening once again. I'm Don Jackson. Gilbert Keith Chesterton wrote, To an open house in the evening, home shall men come. To an older place than Eden, and a taller town than Rome. More of the experience of place with lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, Michael Buble coming back home and Alicia Keys, if I ain't got you. John Quinn from One Square Mile on the Atlantic Coast published by Walker wrote, the sight, sound, and scent of the earth's living waters have since time immemorial had a deep and profound appeal to the great majority of humanity. The vast ocean and the multitudes of rivers great and small that serve it occupy a primeval spiritual place in the collective consciousness. So much so, that wherever there is a shoreline, there will be people. Whether to stand at the edge of the sea on a summer day and simply gaze upon the mysterious and primal deep for a few minutes, or to dream of a happy home by the riverside, the presence of water speaks to the heart in a timeless and intimate way. John Quinn from One Square Mile on the Atlantic Coast, published by Walker. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, Jim Cuddy and Pull Me Through and the Righteous Brothers with an unchained melody. Robert McNeil from Wordstruck published by Viking, wrote, From my mother came the idea that going to the sea repaired the spirit. That is where she walked when she was sad or worried or lonely for my father. If she had been crying, she came back composed. If she had left angry with us, she returned in good humor. So we naturally believed that there was a cleansing effect to be had. 
that letting the fresh wind blow through your mind and spirits, as well as your hair and clothing, purged black thoughts. That contemplating the ceaseless motion of the waves calmed a raging spirit. Unquote. Robert McNeil from Wordstruck, published by Viking. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, the honey drippers and the sea of love and Diana Krall and narrow daylight. My companion writing is called Experience of Place. Log on right now to the CHFI website. Follow the links on the home page to visit my weblog at chfi.com. And Lovers and Other Strangers returns. I'm Don Jackson. Romance. Set to words and music. Lovers and Other Strangers. On 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's Light Favorites. 98.1 CHFI. And relax with us online at chfi.com. And welcome back to Lovers and Other Strangers, now a blog as well, at chfi.com. I'm Don Jackson. Scott Russell Sanders, from Townships, edited by Michael Martone, and published by the University of Iowa Press, wrote, Home ground is the place where, since before you had words for such knowledge, you have known the smells the seasons, the birds and beasts, the human voices, the houses, the lay of the land, and the quality of light. It is the landscape you learn before you retreat inside the illusion of your skin. You may love the place if you flourished there, or hate the place if you suffered there. But love it or hate it, you cannot shake free even if you move to the Antipodes, even if you become intimate with new landscapes, you still bear the impression of that first ground. Scott Russell Sanders from Townships And Tad Williams from Stone of Farewell published by Daw Books wrote, Never make your home in a place. Make a home for yourself inside your own head. You'll find what you need to furnish it. Memory, friends you can trust, love of learning, and other such things. That way, it will go with you wherever your journey. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, Billy Vera at this moment, and Justin Hines, and I wish you well. This appeared in the Telegraph Journal in St. John, New Brunswick, and reprinted in the January 93 issue of the Reader's Digest, and I quote, The brooks run quietly now. Streams born of highland springs follow their paths downhill through woodlands, pastures, and upland mowings. Snow covers the slow-moving waters in many places. Where the water spreads over granite ledges, lace patterns are crocheted in ice against the granular snowbanks. Large brooks in the meadows flow slowly beneath gray-green ice. Wind-sculpted snowdrifts curve along the banks. In the morning and late afternoon sun, they glint with cold gleams of amber, gold, and pink. The water sings a muted song that harmonizes with the spirit of winter. This is the time of simplicity. This is the time when the landscape is a Kriegoff painting. Gray day or bright. 
the stillness of winter air broods on the landscape. The soft music one hears is a haunting melody, a murmur of contentment from beneath the white covering. If one listens closely, he thinks he can hear the affirmation of the rightness of nature. For in the northern clime it was ordained we should have four seasons and the music of muted brooks is a part of the winter season. An excerpt from the Telegraph Journal in St. John, New Brunswick. An experience of place. Lovers and other strangers. From 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, the Eagles and Desperado. To conclude, an excerpt from an article that appeared in the March 1990 issue of New Woman magazine by Sherry Suop Cohen. And I quote, Certain places seem to call us with a siren's song. An irresistible summons. When we are surrounded by these precious landscapes, when we breathe their fragrance and hear their sounds, we, along with the Mozarts, the Bob Dylans, the Jane Austens, the Danielle Steeles, the Van Goghs, and even the Donald Trumps of the world do our best work. Unquote. Some lines later, she continues, to each her own landscape of the mind. It is to this place that we return again and again, seeking the creative charge the natural sedative. Unquote. An excerpt from an article that appeared in the March 1990 issue of New Woman magazine written by Sherry Soob Khan. And I hope that I am able to regularly provide you with the way to your own fondly remembered landscape of the mind, if I can borrow that term, from the writer of that article, Sherry Sue Cohen. Indeed, the experience of place may bring you a few moments of great joy, but it can also be the fast track to some rather painful memories. You'll never be quite sure where this program will take you when you tune in every night. But I can assure you of a memorable ride. My companion writing tonight is Experience of Place. Log on to the CHFI website. Follow the link on the homepage to my weblog at chfi.com. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Good night, sweet dreams. I'm Don Jackson. Your life set to words and music. Lovers and other strangers on 98.1 CHFI. <laughs>